Uh, the government are considering a rapid testing regime as a means of easing travel restrictions. It's hoped that this will ensure that friends and families can travel to visit their loved ones this Christmas. The government say they hope to have this testing up and running by next month. Uh, Cabinet recently agreed to align Ireland with the EU traffic light system when it comes to travel. And under the plan, the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control will publish a weekly map of the EU using a three-stage colour system that will indicate the level of risk in each area. Because this is just a moving target, isn't it? It changes all of the time. And on the line now to discuss new testing is Fine Gael TD for Dublin Midwest, Emer Higgins. Emer, how are you? I'm great, thanks, Claire. Thanks for having me on the show. So how impactful will these quick tests be and, and what will they effect will they have in Irish airports? Yeah, so at the moment, there's just one type of test clinically approved for use in Ireland by the HSE. That's called the PCR test, and that's the one that's being used in test centres right across the country. But of course, there have been advances in technology um, since, since COVID has hit. And rapid testing, which um, can be done either by swab or by antigen testing, is being used in other countries at the moment. So France, Portugal and Greece are all now using antigen tests to supplement their PCR testing programme. So I think really we're, we're probably a little bit behind the curve on this. And I would love to see Ireland uh, step up on it. I mean, the beauty of these tests is that they produce results very quickly without needing to be sent to a lab. So at the moment, if you can imagine, we're processing 115,000 tests a week, and that's pretty much the entire population of County Waterford. And every one of those tests needs to be sent to a lab to be individually evaluated before we can get back to people to let them the test results. So in the meantime, we've got people who are restricting their movements, who are panicking about whether or not they may have COVID and might have passed it on to someone else before they were approved for a test. But imagine if instead we could get a result to people within minutes. And that's really what rapid testing gives us the opportunity to do. And so lamp tests um, are one source of rapid testing. And they take about an hour. And the antigen test takes something in and around only 15 minutes. So these were clinically evaluated and approved for use here in Ireland by the HSE. I think they could be a real game changer and they could offer people a glimpse of light at the end of this tunnel we're all stuck in at the moment. And aside from the travel and being able to go from country to country or bring loved ones home for Christmas, this would also, I think, really help with the spread of coronavirus. Because you do hear anecdotally, because this virus is asymptomatic in many cases, that people might go for a test but feel, I think I'm fine, so I might pop into a shop Mm -hmm. or go to a friend's house Whereas if you get the results back in 15 minutes, it takes away that, that grey area and that time where people just aren't self-isolating for whatever reason. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think the benefits to this are immense. Like they're cheap as well for a start, which helps us from a cost perspective. But they're really easy to administer. And because you don't need to go to a lab or a test centre, you could have them rolled out in, for example, schools. And so at the moment, if a child comes into school and has a positive COVID test, depending on how contact tracing goes but usually what happens is the entire class um, is told to self-isolate for two weeks and they're deprived of education for another two weeks Um, and really if we could have somebody come out, deliver those tests on site to people in classrooms it could avoid schools being closed for two weeks it could avoid all that unnecessary upheaval and I think even just from a practical perspective there's huge benefits from that and um, already there's uh, private companies availing of this. So I know some construction companies, for example, are using it to test people coming in and out of sites. I think the GAA are looking at them as an option before championship games. But we need a decision from Method and the Government Advisory Committee at this stage as to whether or not these could be rolled out by the HSE in congregated settings in, in our communities. So in our schools, for example, and I know you spoke as well earlier about airports. I, I think that's the stage we need to get to. Emer, stay on the line for me there. I want to bring in Owen Curry, travel expert, um, joining us now on News Talk. Owen, do you see this rapid testing regime being implemented in Irish airports? What what would be the the obstacles at the moment? Uh, good afternoon, Claire. Good afternoon, Emer. We have a huge appetite for rapid testing among the aviation community, among the travel community. Airports want them, airlines want them. IATA did a survey last week. 88% of passengers are willing to do them and everybody thinks it's a good idea. 
The real problem, uh, Claire, is uh, one large and one smaller problem. The first is confidence, the second is cost. Even where uh, PCR testing, full tests have been brought in, they've been brought in from some destinations to passengers arriving in Italy and very comprehensively by Germany. Um, there are all these questions about uh, false positives and false negatives. Um, there would be a strong feeling among the Irish uh, medical community that the number of false positives generated by airport testing, and remember we still have about 8,000, 8,500 people going through Dublin Airport every day, um, the number of false positives would put the systems under pressure. And as we all know, systems are already under pressure. So while everybody wants to get to a position where we have that quick 15 minute test, low cost, passengers get on board, uh, we get a greater sense of being able to travel. We ha haven't reached that. And at European level, there are different uh, countries investing different amounts of resources. Every, we haven't even started this process, but uh, the debate goes on. In the meantime, the aviation industry is doing what it does and makes sure that the filter systems, the masking on board and the airports are enforcing social distancing uh, a bit like our shops and supermarkets have been doing. And they've been doing a pretty very, very good job on it um, since the skies reopened in June and July. I don't think t uh, we're at a position where we will have tests that will reach those two bars of the right cost for the passenger and the confidence among the medical professional community. I'll bring back in Fine Gael TD for Dublin Midwest, Emer Higgins. Emer, what's your take on the confidence surrounding these tests? I mean, I have a text here, for example, from another Claire. She says, how would rapid testing allow people home for Christmas? It only shows that you don't have the virus at that point in time. You could be infectious the next day. I'm living in Britain and would love to come home, but can't see how I can this particular Christmas. Now, I know you can't answer it from a, a scientific point of view, but what's being said about the confidence or the validity of these quicker tests? Well, I think what's out there is, is very much the understanding that the PCR test is the gold standard test, but that we need to continue to invest in research, in development and innovation to see how we can make our rapid tests just as effective. And um, so, for example, false positives are, are an issue with, um, with the rapid testing. And that's why if you do get a positive for rapid testing, you're then sent for the PCR test. And um, so from my perspective, I suppose, uh, if I was if somebody who was to, to be traveling, if I was in your, your text or your shoes traveling home for Christmas, um, it would definitely fill me with more confidence that you're talking about false positives being an issue rather than false negatives. Because what we definitely don't want to do is give people the, the okay that they're all clear and then maybe they behave in a different way. So for, from my perspective, I think false positives then sent for PCR testing, I still think that's uh, less cumbersome than the current system we have. I suppose in terms of travel as well, um, the European traffic light system is what's being introduced from the 8th of November. And this is the green, amber, red system. So green is for um, countries that have 25 or less um, incidences of COVID per 100,000 of the population. Uh, now, if you can imagine we're in Dublin here, we're at 250. Uh, rather than 25 so we're 10 times above that at the moment so green list w won't be applying to us for a while i don't imagine the amber list um would be where you'd be asked quarantine for two weeks with the exception of if you've had a negative pcr test result three days before taking off and the red list will be no exemptions to quarantine Now, most of the eu countries at the moment are in that red list zone but what we'd love to do is we'd love to be able to get COVID under control so that we're all operating on the AMBER system. We can be at least relying on the PCR tests and test results of it. And I think we could also be using rapid testing to supplement that testing programme. Travel expert Owen Curry, do you think this is the, the golden ticket that we're waiting for in the middle of a pandemic with all the restrictions in place, this traffic light system and this faster test system? 
traffic light system has been completely overtaken by events. Uh, there are no countries at 25 to 50. Norway and Estonia are there. Turkey, which is outside ECDC, would be there. Everybody else is uh, between their three countries, between 50 and 100. Everybody else is over 100. The Irish interpretation of the traffic light system is a little bit different from everybody else's in that we um, take just the, we would count orange as equivalent to red and we abandon, we are, aren't taking the metric of the number of positives um, as a percentage that was put in to prevent countries which test a lot. For instance, Luxembourg has tested more than its population, but it doesn't really matter. We're sort of skirting around the issue that the infection rate is out of control all through Europe. So the traffic light system, which was well-intentioned to reopen Europe's borders, is now uh, redundant to the stage that, to, to the effect that when it comes in November the 8th, it's likely we won't have any country that's even in the orange. And we're not the only ones facing that. Uh, Europe is going to be looking back. The aviation industry was very disappointed that, uh, for instance, the arbitrariness of decisions and things like that was agreed at the European Council of Ministers. The document uh, uh, had changed substantially from the one that was sent from to the Council of Ministers, and they're looking back to the Commission for a guidance. If Christmas uh, relocations are going to happen and people reconnecting with their families. And remember, Grace, this is a very different Ireland from the one myself and uh, Emer and yourself grew up in. 17% of our population was born abroad. If there is going to be travel at Christmas, the traffic light system would probably have to be replaced by something more dynamic. And I think that a little bit more trust has got to be put back into what the Eurovision, uh, European aviation industry has been doing, because travel, after all, is only responsible for 1.6% of the infections uh, out of our 58,000 infections. And that figure is declining as the number of community infections increases. And most the only cases we have of uh, onboard infection, there was one very well publicised this morning from earlier in the summer, where uh, pre the wearing of masks on board, if we are going to be travelling for Christmas, and it's a big if, I don't think testing is going to deliver it. I don't think the traffic light system is going to deliver it. I think there's going to be a more, uh, the medical community and the government are going to have to sit back and listen to uh, the, the aviation uh, people and uh, the safeguards they've put in place. They're very good at safety. They fly without crashing. Safety is their first concern for their passengers.